In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we praise Allah, Creator of the heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings to the seal of the prophets and messengers, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, his family, his companions, all those who call to his way, who establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we are coming to the close in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly been merciful to allow us to be of those who would fast in this sacred time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly been merciful for us to be able to stand in prayer, to be able to make dua, to be able to give in charity. All of the actions we have done in this month is mercy to us, and we pray that Allah would accept it. As we near the end of this month, we need to reflect upon some of the lessons that we have learned in our fast. We need to recognize the fact that the essence of a psalm, the essence of fasting, comes from la'allakum tattaqun. That the essence of fasting is taqwa. It is a combination of the fear and the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a spiritual shield, a protection, which is around the believers. And this consciousness, this consciousness of Allah, is something that we need to culture. This consciousness of Allah is an element of our life that we need to, to, to consistently rebuild and strengthen. Also, we have learned that Ramadan is a time of guidance. It is a time of clear signs. And in this month, as in other Ramadans, Allah has manifested clear evidence within the world itself, within the natural uh, changing of our planet, within the struggles of the human race, but also within our very lives. Clear signs are given during the month of Ramadan because the fasting person is not tied down with the search for food. The fasting person can raise to the point where he or she is able to look at the events and to benefit from the events even higher than the angels themselves. The month of Ramadan is also a time of Al-Furqan. It is that time that the scholars have told us gives us Thabat al-Qulub, wa quwwat al-Basair, wa husn al-Hidayah. It gives us a strengthening of the hearts. It gives us consolidation of our understanding, powerful insights, and it also gives us the best of guidance. And surely through this fast, for those who really were holding on to the rope of Allah Azza wa Jal, there is a strengthening of the heart. Also during this fast, for those who reflected on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is insight that comes into the, the outer world and insight that develops in the very inner world of our bodies. Alhamdulillah, fasting has opened up new dimensions of our existence. We are not just beings who struggle to eat. We are not just beings who are looking for water, who are living for sexuality. But we are higher beings. The body is a temple. The body is a shell. But the real individual is a ruh. The real individual is the soul. And so Ramadan brings forward the angelic qualities. It brings forward the soul and it puts into proper perspective the body so that the soul now rises to the surface and the individual is able to have a higher dimension in his or her understanding. And so alhamdulillah, we recognized that not only should our bodies be fasting, but our limbs should fast, should abstain from evil. Our hearts should also be fasting. In this time, the great lesson of self-control, the daily struggle in order to maintain imsak, the daily rigorous nature, especially for those living in hot climates. This is a great lesson because now that we are out of this month, now that we have reached another phase in our existence, now the self-control needs to be permanent. Ramadan is a time of striving and we have found that from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the believers were striving in this month. They not only stood up to evil within themselves, but they stood up to evil all around them to the point where some of the greatest confrontations in Islamic history actually happened 
during the month of Ramadan. So it is time to confront our fears and we need to continue on with that same strength outside of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a time of charity. It is a time of giving. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, was the best of those who would give. He gave us the prophetic example in how to extend yourself in this month and we should carry it outside of the month of Ramadan till our lives. We are living in times of deception. We are living in times where people have the ability to make what is true seem false and to make what is false seem true. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in an authentic hadith reported in At-Tabarani, has told us, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تظهر الفتن ويكثر الكذب وتتقارب الأسواق. The Prophet ﷺ has said, the last hour would not come about until fitin, the plural of fitna, trials and temptations appear in the land and lying would be on an increase and the marketplaces would come, cro would come close. We have seen this, especially the last part, aswaq. Now, an individual doesn't have to go outside to the market. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, a person would go sometimes outside of the city to the marketplace. Then maybe the markets came into uh, the center of town. But today, an individual can pick up his cell phone, laying in the bed, and go on to an international market and do business and actually uh, finish a, a, a contract or a business arrangement and he hasn't even left his bed. Sadaqa Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam wa tataqarab al-aswaq. But also Rasulullah sallallahu has told us that fitin would appear. Trials and temptations would be widespread in the land and lying would be on the increase people would become professionals at deceiving each other. And so we need to consider this as we come to a close of this sacred month. Our lives are moving by very quickly. Look at the month of Ramadan. It was here one moment and now it is leaving us. How fast was this? Look how time is, is flying in front of our eyes. So are the lives that we are living. Many of us can remember when we were very young and we were with our father or our mother. Many of those who used to go to the masjids can remember going to the masjid when they are very, very young. Now we've grown up. In some cases, the person may be reaching 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old. Where did the time go? We were once very young and now age is taking us. Such is time. Time is relative, and as we move toward the day of resurrection, the time actually is predicted to increase in speed. It would increase as Rasulullah has predicted that it would. And so in these final moments, I remind myself and I remind you, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawt. Every soul will taste death. And so we need to keep this in mind, that the life of this world is a fleeting matter. We need to keep in mind that those few moments we have been blessed with in this world, we need to treasure these moments, to cherish the time given to us by the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us as Muslims with tawheed, with the oneness of God. We recognize that we should not be bowing down to idols. We should recognize we should not be bowing down to people. We should not be bowing down to currencies, no matter how strong they appear to be. We also should recognize that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the seal of the prophets and messengers, and his example is an example that should stay with us. But is this enough? No. It is no longer enough for us to just be Muslim. We have to take it to another stage. Islam has to become the basis of our lives. We have to become part of a generation that seeks Islam in all ways of life, that seeks through peaceful means to deliver this message 
to all people living throughout this planet. We have to recognize that our Islam is not our nationality. It is not our blood. It is not our language. It is not because we were born in a special city or village, but it is our way of life. So therefore, we have to ask ourselves, are we making our salat regularly? Are we praying five times in a day? Do we go to Salat al Jumu'ah? Did we pay our zakat? Are we planning to go to pilgrimage to Mecca if we have the ability to do that? We have to recognize the blessings that Allah has given to us. Are we really putting them into effect into our lives? If we have the ability to go to the pilgrimage of Mecca, then it is wajib. It is compulsory upon us. We have to look into our lives. Are we really living a modest life? What is coming out of our mouth? Is it dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, or is it dhikr shaitan? Is it the remembrance of the devil? What are the actions that we are doing? Are we good Muslims on Yom al Jumu'ah, And then when Saturday comes, we change into another individual? What is the state of our Islam? Where do we really stand? These are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves when we come into the end of this month. It is reported that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has informed us about the day of resurrection. And he has told his followers, I will meet you at al Haud. On the day of judgment, I will meet you at al Haud. It is a watering place. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, and I will come to this place and I will see some people and I will recognize them as my believers but a barrier will come and they will not be able to drink and I will ask, oh my Lord, these are my people. And Allah will say, but you do not know what they have done after you. And so we are the followers of Muhammad Wasallam. But what are we doing after the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him? May Allah forgive us. May Allah give us strength. And may Allah elevate our Islam that we can take this message all over this planet and we can institute Islam into our lives. I say what I have said. I ask Allah to have mercy on me and you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.